Did you know that Sarasota has seven unique and distinct islands? I was born and raised here, and I've had the privilege of growing up on each one of these islands. And to this day, I still visit and spend time on each one of these barrier islands, and usually for a unique purpose. Even being in the same county, these islands are so vastly different and offer so many different things. I'm going to, in this video, give you the ins and outs and what it would be like to visit, things to do, restaurants, and what it would be like to relocate or live on each one of these islands. Hi, I'm Ryan Zakos. I'm with Zakos Realty Design Group out of Sarasota. I actually am sitting here in my office on Venice Island, one of the islands that I'm gonna talk about in this video. I started this firm with my father. He's a retired police officer. He worked with the Sarasota County Sheriff's Office for 25 years. I've had the, the privilege of, of serving and helping hundreds of relocation buyers. We started this channel for YouTube as a great way to be able to help people in that journey of homeownership, as well as understanding and learning this area. We honestly feel like we know this area better than anyone. We hope that we can add value. Please like, subscribe. And definitely reach out if you have any questions or if we can help in any way. So let's just dive right in. I'm going to start with the most northern island in Sarasota County and work my way south. I'm going to start with Longboat, work my way all the way down south to Minnesota Key, and that's what I'll end there. I'll give you some insight for each island, as well as some things to do, some restaurants, some stuff that if you're visiting, you might want to check out. So that's some little nugget at the, each one of these islands. So hopefully at the end of this video, you'll have a really good understanding of what it would be like to visit. You'll see some imagery. You'll see some videos that we've taken on these islands, as well as if you were actually looking to relocate, this might actually help you in understanding, I would wanna be on that island or that island based on what it's offering, what that look and feel and culture is for the island. Longboat Key itself is its own little city. It has its own fire and uh, police and everything that a city infrastructure would have. It's a 12 mile stretch of land that runs, half of it is in Sarasota County and half of it's in Manatee County. If you're going from downtown Sarasota, you would go up through Lido onto Longboat Key and then if you're going through Bradenton, you'd go through Anna Maria down to Longwood as well. It's the only island on the list. I think this is actually a huge important fact. It's the only island on the list that you cannot access from the mainland directly. So every single one of the other six islands, you can access it directly from the mainland. This allows Longboat Key to have a lot more quieter, reserved, desolate feel. And often it's deemed as one of the quietest more removed islands in all of sarasota county and that for, and for a reason obviously for that reason it is a large piece of land being that is 12 miles long it encompasses about 8,000 residents i know in season it spikes it probably gets up to 12 to 15,000 people in season or season right now you'll see that tick up of people that are coming down that have vacation rentals or seasonal ownerships or whatever it may be so those people will come down and they'll inhabit the island but still feels very very quiet in general compared to everywhere else here on the gulf coast a couple of unique characteristics of the island is that there are 12 public beach accesses but what i think is so cool about it is and i even like to go up there with my family to access some of these beach accesses they're very small beach accesses these public lots are very small there are six public parks these parks offer everything that like like in bayfront park you can walk along the bay there and you can look into the bayou the mangroves so it's a wonderful little walk they often offer ball courts, activity rooms, public restrooms, maybe some water. And some of these parks even give you beach access as well. So like Bayfront Park, I absolutely love to go there with my family. It's one of my favorite places. It's kind of a hidden spot. Please don't pass it on to friends. Just keep it for yourself. But Bayfront Park, you can walk along the sidewalk there. The ki my kids love walking along the sidewalk there along the bay look for fish look for turtles look for you know everything else there's mangroves there's wildlife there's public restroom there's actually a playground there there's some ball courts but then you just cross gulf of mexico boulevard right there main street basically a private public beach to yourself there's hardly anyone there ever there's no parking you have to park at the park itself and walk across the street and there's only so many spots it's a wonderful spot to check out but six public parks 12 public beach accesses each beach access has limited parking, limited space. So it feels like you're basically on a private beach. This beach in Longboat Key is pristine. It's that powdery white sand. The bay side on the east side of the island, it's gonna be filled with some canal infrastructure for the single family homes, dense mangrove. It's gonna overlook a large part of the bay. So it's beautiful open bay views if you're looking for property. Longboat Key has five golf courses. Longboat Key Club on the island itself is probably the most premier exclusive club in the whole entire gulf coast of florida the club itself is absolutely spectacular they have a full service beach club 
as well as 45 holes of golf on Longbow Key itself, on the island. There's dining, there's restaurants, and the best part of the club might even be the tennis club itself. It's actually world renowned, it's worldly ranked. It's often in the top five private clubs. There's 20 Harcher tennis courts there in Longbow Key Club. And even if you don't want to be a part of the club, there's, I believe, 64 public golf courses within a 20 mile radius of Longbow Key. If you could picture Longbow Key as a Midwestern suburb golf club community combined with a yacht club, combined with beachfront living and that island lifestyle, you take all three of those, comp like that culture, and you combine it into one, that's ultimately what you're gonna get in Longboat Key. It's being that you can't access it from the mainland, it's a huge selling point. A lot of people love that. One of my favorite communities in Longboat Key is Bay Isles, the gated community. Bay Isles has its own beach club as well, and it has tons of amenities that, as any gated, private, exclusive community would have. And I could do a whole entire video on just Bay Isles itself, but whether you wanna be in the gated community of Bay Isles, or you wanna be on a canal front, somewhere else in Longboat Key, or in a luxury condo, Longbow Key offers everything from mobile homes to villas to condos. And you could find condos as low as in the 400s to well over a million for those beachfront penthouse condos. And then you could find single family home as low as five or six hundreds for a small historic cottage feeling Florida style home. On the north side of the island, you're gonna have a lot more of that historic. There's a little historic downtown down there. Side note, Longbow Key kind of sits where the north side of the island is lower than the high side of the island. So think of it as kind of like on an angle, if you want to call it that, but it does it does go. So there are areas on the south side of the island that are not in a flood zone, and which is kind of crazy being on a barrier island. And then you're going to have some on the, on the north side that are in a very, very low flood plain and your flood insurance is going to be very, very high there. But you can find a historic, you know, home that need to be remodeled, maybe in the five, six hundreds and then you'll get absolutely spectacular beachfront estates at 10,000, 20,000 square feet, up to $20 million. Those are just spectacular residences. And you'll find celebrities living on Longbow Key from famous tennis players to artists to actors and actresses. So there's a, there's a lot going on Longbow Key, but it is a place that you can live, you can feel removed, you can feel quiet. It's a great place if you wanna just go to the beach and not have a ton of traffic or a ton of people around you. Now going just south of Longbow Key is Lido. That's one of the accesses that you would go to access Longbow Key is from the south side, which is Lido, which is gonna be kind of in the city of Sarasota, but also as well as the Sarasota County. Lido itself is again known for St. Armand's Circle. St. Armand's Circle is just a mere two miles to downtown Sarasota. So Lido itself is spectacular in its geographical location. You can't beat it. You can be in the center hub, downtown center hub. You can go to everything that downtown Sarasota offer from dining, all the Zagat rated restaurants in downtown Sarasota to its plays at Oslo Theater to Van Wazel Performing Arts. If you want to see a ballet or a nationally renowned music artist, they're all there in downtown Sarasota. So being two miles from in access to that while having a wonderful beach in Lido. Lido is often known as the locals beach, if you want to call it that. A lot of the locals and growing up here would go to Lido. We would avoid Siesta as it has become more of a, a tourist attraction. Spectacular beach though. And then on the north side of Lido, what makes it actually really interesting is the north side of Lido is where I like to go to kind of get away. It's the quieter side of Lido. There are about 50 acres, I believe, of walking trails. You can walk through the pines, you can walk through the main like the mangroves and everything else that that encompass that shoreline. It's a it's a wonderful way where you can kind of like step out of like Lido itself is really busy with having St. Armand Circle. St. Armand Circle is 130 shops has everything from fine dining to casual restaurants. It's a great place to grab a coffee, grab an ice cream, grab a drink, hang out, and then walk down to Lido, watch the sunset. It's one of the only places in the area where you can do that. It's a great spot from that perspective. The north side of Lido is a great place if you want to kind of escape that, just walk up north a little bit, and you can remove yourself from that traffic around St. Armand's and get a little bit tucked away and get within 50 acres. Obviously, 50 acres is a lot of space, so you can kind of spread out and, and really enjoy nature and get away from that. On the south side, you kind of have that same concept. You have South Lido Park and you had Ted Sperling Park. Ted Sperling is a, is a great place where you can 
drop a kayak. It's one of my favorite things to do in all of Sarasota. If you're going to do something and you're visiting and you want to check the area out and you want to see the water, I highly recommend doing a paddleboard rental or a kayak or canoe rental and then dropping that in at Ted Sperling. And then there's mangroves. There's, you know, a mile or so of mangrove tunnels that you can actually paddle through. The wildlife is amazing. The scenery is amazing. The water's typically clear because it's not moving much. It's a wonderful, easy, fun thing to do. Check that out. And then South Lido Park, there's a playground. And that's actually a great spot for if you're a boater to pull up right there on the shore, right in that pass between Lido and Siesta. There's a pass there. A lot of boaters will pull up and they'll enjoy that shoreline and the water right there within that pass. And then Lido has a public beach as well. Overall, Lido is a spectacular area geographically. There's a lot more things to do because there's a there's that hub of St. Armand Circle, which is the main attraction for Lido. There's not as much real estate on Lido as well. There's only about 2,000 or so people that actually call Lido home. Obviously, that's a quarter of what would be on Longboat Key. It's a smaller island. So because of that, the price points are going to be higher. The real estate, it's about supply and demand, right? So there's a lot less homes availability, condo availability, as if there were on Longboat. You're going to pay a little bit more of a premium for that. But Lido does offer everything from those condos. And you could find some communities that are like more motel style condo communities that are starting maybe in the 400s. And obviously, again, going up to well over a million for those beachfront condo, penthouse style condo living. And then single family home again, starting at over a million and, and then just going up from there. And then there's spectacular beachfront homes there. But the beachfront homes on Lido are a lot fewer and farther between than you would have on Longboat. A lot of the beachfront stuff on Lido is going to be more condo driven and not as much single family. And obviously in Longboat Key, you have a 12 mile stretch of beachfront as well that makes up a mix of, of all that condos and single family. Jumping back to Longboat real quick, I forgot to give you a couple things to do to check out a longboat if you just want to visit and check out and see if the area is for you, as well as uh, maybe a restaurant or two. There's a couple that I really, really enjoy on Longboat Key. So I already mentioned Bayfront Park. You definitely want to check that out, especially if you have kids. But even if you don't, it's a great place to park. Check out the bay. They walk across the street to the beach. It's a quiet beach, wonderful beach. Check out Bayfront Park. Quick Point Nature Preserve right there on the south side. It's a wonderful preserve great trails it's a it, you're kind of in the nature you kind of feel like you're being removed from it all when you get into that park so it's a wonderful place to check out beer can island on the north side of the island is another you're there you're sitting on the island you're kind of surrounded by this driftwood and everything else that's going on and it's again you feel like you're kind of not even in sarasota at that point which i absolutely love about it and then a couple of places to check out for a restaurant euphemia hay probably my favorite steakhouse in all of sarasota there's dry dock again world renowned food you could actually boat up to it and then shore is on the north side of the island near that historic downtown area and they have some great food and also you get another boatable boatable restaurant there on longboat so going back to lido i'm going to hit you with a couple things to do i've already talked about them Ted Sperling Park, check out on the south side of the island. Moat Marine is an aquarium. They're, they're building it now over in UTC on the east side of Sarasota. But right now, and I think it's always going to exist there to a certain degree, Moat Marine exists on Lido Key. They have a, it's a wonderful little aquarium to check out. And a couple of restaurants that I would check out. Old Salty Dog is right across the street from Moat Marine. And it's on the bay, or it's on the, the pass there between Longboat and Lido. So it's on the water. Salty Dog. The food is not my favorite food in the world, but it was featured on Food Network. They're known for their deep fried hot dogs. They have a great fish and chips, local, you know, grouper and stuff like that caught. It's a good spot from that. So Old Salty Dog and Lido is something to check out. And then there's a ton of other restaurants and there's a mix, like I said, of casual, like Columbia is a great spot on St. Edward Circle on Lido to check out one of the oldest Cuban restaurants in the area. Bird Key is halfway between Lido and downtown Sarasota. So as you're crossing the John Ringling Bridge, that first little island you come to is Bird Key. Bird Key is 100% residential. It is, there's no really town center, but you're right in the thick of it all. You can literally take a left at a Bird Key and be at St. Norman Circle in a mile. Or you take a right and you're in downtown Sarasota in a mile. So it's absolutely wonderful location. It is often because of that geographical location deemed as the best residential neighborhood in all of Sarasota, definitely one of the highest targeted spots to be in the area. It's a 250 acre island, like I said, halfway between Sarasota and Lido. 
There's about 1,000 people that make up this island, including celebrities. There's celebrities that live on Longboat, Lido, every single barrier island that we have in Sarasota. There are celebrities that, that live on these islands. So obviously they appeal to different people for different reasons. But a thousand people make it up. There are about 510 homes or so. There's three types of, of those residential properties that you can purchase on Bird Key. They have bayfront, canal front, and then what they call garden homes. Most of the island itself is going to be on some sort of water in some degree, but there are homes that do like back up to green space or other homes with some green space in between. And they call those garden homes. Obviously the lowest priced homes on Bird Key are going to be those homes that are garden homes. The next level up would be the canal. And then the highest would be those bayfront homes. You can find a bayfront home that's gonna be a spectacular very large estate on the bay and that could be 10 million plus and then a garden home might be you could, might be able to find or snag something for just a hair over a million but again bird key is known for its bird key yacht club it's started out of a 1914 mansion that was built here in sarasota so it's a it's a really cool building really cool experience really cool atmosphere just like any like most private clubs it's very 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 social memberships include boat slips tennis courts fitness centers classes there's olympic size swimming pool and they offer tons of group activities like golf and art and lectures and a bunch of different social events what's kind of cool about bird key is bird key yacht club is only about a third of the memberships actually have a boat so there's a big portion of that of that yacht club that is just primarily social and there's very good social activities and, and sports side recreation that are offered in the yacht club that it is appealing in and of itself to be a part of it so Thank you for watching my video on Bird Key. I hope that it provided some good insight to you and what Bird Key is. I absolutely love the geographical location of Bird Key and its centrality to a mile from downtown Sarasota, mile to St. Armand Circle and Lido. You get access to the beach as well as the city, one of the most exclusive and wonderful communities in all of Sarasota has to offer. Siesta Key is just south of Lido. There is no bridge to access Siesta from Lido. So you'd have to go out to downtown, around on the mainland, and then Siesta Key has two bridges on and off of the mainland from Sarasota. So on the north bridge, access to the north side of the island, then Stickney Point, the south side of the island, you can access the south side of Siesta Key. Siesta Key is three and a half square miles of land, you know, land mass, and about a mile of that is water. So it has a really great canal infrastructure that make up the, the heart of Siesta Key there. And then Siesta itself has a little, little village area, which is a wonderful place it's got restaurants it's got tons of restaurants everything from again casual to a little bit more upscale gas station grocery stores cafes the coffee shops ice cream everything you would think of in a small little beach town village it is very touristy as you know siesta key is often regarded as the number one beach in the whole entire country or even the world beautiful white sands it's definitely even if you don't want to live on siesta because of the traffic and because of commercialized aspect of it it is still a place that you'd want to come you'd want to visit you would want to check out for yourself it's a spectacular beach i currently sold a couple houses recently on there i have one under contract now and people that are you know they're that are buying these homes they're, they're absolutely loving the ability to walk from their home with a boat dock, you know, on a canal into the village and be able to grab dinner from the village or grab a drink, then walk down to watch the sunset. Siesta Key has three public beaches. There is Siesta Key Main Beach, there's Crescent Beach, and then on the south side of Siesta Key is Turtle Beach. Siesta Key is definitely the most popular. It's the biggest, it's the most vast. When you walk out, you just see white sand. It feels like forever to the water it's absolutely gorgeous there's volleyball courts there's there's a pavilion that has food and knickknacks and all that kind of stuff restrooms but siesta key also has 13 public beach accesses starting at the very north end of the island and working its way down to about crescent beach there's even if you don't want to go to the main public beach and you want to avoid that commercialized feel and traffic you could probably sneak into one of these beach accesses find a spot that someone might not you know know about or recognize and if i'm going to go to siesta that's typically what i'll do is i'll try to go to one of the beach accesses that aren't highly known or commercialized and uh, pull up there and then walk out to the beach from there and enjoy it so again uh, like diving real quick into the real estate side of siesta key siesta key makes up of everything from condos villas single family homes there's about six thousand people that call siesta key home 
Not as many as Longbow Key, but obviously a lot more than Lido. Because there is a lot more homes for sale, there is some value in it still in Siesta Key. You could still find a, a single family home for probably under a million dollars. And being that it's accessible to one of the best beaches in the world, as well as walkable potentially to a village, have all these beaches around you and beach access points could be spectacular. Even, you know, one of the houses I'm selling right now is a house under $2 million, over 3,000 square feet on a canal and siesta and it's uh, a spectacular home so there's there's a lot going on in siesta currently but yeah you can find condos starting really low for those again those like motel style school. old school you know condos in the 300 400 thousand dollar range the single family home starting again just under under a million maybe for something that needs to be remodeled that might not be canal front but on siesta and walkable to everything to obviously 10 million plus depending on if you're beachfront one of my favorite neighborhoods in on siesta is uh, the sanderling club gated community all residential there's homes in there that are on multiple acres in this gated community on the beach with beach access have amenities you know it's a spectacular little neighborhood and it's so rare because of the size of the property and the lots in the homes as well as having that beachfront access i think it's a it's a very unique attribute to siesta something to check out a couple things to do as well as some restaurants to check out Obviously, I've talked about the public beach. It's a must do. If you're going to Siesta and you're not familiar with it, you have to check out the public beach. Even though you might not want to visit all the time, it is something that I think is imperative to, to visit at least once and check out the beauty of it because it is spectacular. The village itself, I think you should check that out. Walk it, enjoy, grab a drink, get that vibe of what it, what it would be like to live in like a vacation town that is it's very lively, live music constantly. It's a really fun environment to be a part of. And then Point of Rocks is about halfway between Siesta Public and, and Turtle Beach. Point of Rocks is a great place to snorkel. It's kind of private. It's a little bit more removed. And then on the very south side past Turtle Beach, if you park at Turtle Beach, you can walk down the beach and there's a, there's a little private it's public but it feels very private it feels very secluded it's called palmer point and one of my favorite places to go you could you could obviously access it from the bay side it used to be a pass back in the day but now it's all beach it connects siesta to casey key but it's you could walk down there and it feels like you're on a private beach on the white sand a lot of nature around you no lights no homes it's you know a wonderful place to to check out and, and visit and try to escape if you're on siesta so check out those things and then a, a one restaurant i highly recommend there is Old Salty Dog on Siesta as well, but I would highly check out Summer House in the Village if you are looking for a really good meal. Going down, Casey Key is an eight mile long island. It's known for its historic swing bridge on the north side of the island. It is a very, very heavy, residential, quiet, removed. It's not known for its, you know, huge, vast white beach. A lot of actually the, the beach on Casey Key is small. It's a very small beach. At high tide, some of that beach might even be gone or disappear. And there's a, you know, obviously some rocks and sea walls and things like that. But it's not really known for its vast white beach. On the south side of the island is Nokomis Beach. And Nokomis Beach is a great beach. In my opinion, I feel like once you get from that Palmer Point north, which is Siesta, Lido, Longboat, very white, very powdery, beautiful sand. As you get to Nokomis and south, it gets a little bit more shellier. They're known for their shark's teeth, their shelling. It's just a different vibe more natural feeling. Nokomis Beach has a lot going on around it. There's a public park there. But overall, Casey Key, if you like, that's the only actual kind of like public section of all of Casey Key. Everything else feels like when you're driving through Casey Key, it just feels like you're in this like almost northern small road, two-way road, people out biking or jogging, very narrow, very quaint. It almost feels like you're in this little tiny town that's kind of escaping into like a beachside village somewhere is what I feel like Casey Key is. Again, there are some celebrities that live on the island that very much love it and are, are known residents of the island forever. Casey Key Fish House on the north side is a, is a wonderful little fish house you want to check out if you're in the area for food. But think of that small, quaint, removed island. What I love about Casey Key, I think one of the most unique attributes is you can actually find homes that are beach to bay. Where often in the country can you have a boat dock on the bay and then maybe even something that's beachfront? But you could literally step out the front of your house, go to this white beach that are looking over the Gulf of Mexico in the crystal clear blue water of the Gulf of Mexico. And on the back side, jump in your boat because you can't have a boat dock on the, on the beach side. 
have a boat dock on the bay, overlooking the bay, overlooking the mainland. You can watch the sunrise in the back of your house over the bay and the sunset over the front of your house over the beach. It's a wonderful opportunity and you can actually find some great value there because it is a little bit more removed being that it's Nokomis Osprey just south of Sarasota and it's not as well known, as not as commercialized as Siesta or Lido may be, you can still find some great value to, to purchase real estate there in Casey Keys. Something to definitely consider. It's only home to about 500 residents. So like I said, it's very quiet, it's very removed and something to consider if you're looking for that lifestyle. The only thing that you'll see again uh, that's busy or commercialized is the very, very south side of the island. That's Nokomis Beach. No one from that beach typically ventures north through the island. It's just, like I said, very residential from that perspective. Going south from there, so there's uh, on Nokomis Beach is the North Jetty, and then there's a path that separates Nokomis Beach and Casey Key from Venice Island. Venice Island is a little circular piece of land. They ran in a little canal that go that separates the, the mainland from Venice Island. Historic downtown Venice is sitting on the island. One of the most unique things, there's a couple points about Venice Island that I think are absolutely imperative. One is it's one of the best places to find value still as a beach town, to have a downtown that is close to the beach. It is one of the lowest median prices in the whole state of Florida. It's a wonderful value if you're still looking for value. So to be able to walk or bike or golf cart, whatever it may be to the beach and have accessibility to downtown, it's one of the places in the country at the at a very affordable price. You can find stuff that $600,000 mark for a single family home. And obviously it's going up from there. If you're looking for a really nice home that's just a block from the beach or something, you'll, you'll pay you know, well over a million for it. But the value is incredible being that there's a wonderful historic downtown with its own theater tons of restaurants live music parks there's six plus miles of of white sand beaches that make up venice island if you're if you're talking from venice all the way down to even through south venice it's like 14 miles or so but just venice island you're talking six miles or so there's a 700 foot public pier that runs off a public beach down there where sharkies and fins a great restaurant on the beach overlooking the water. Check out that restaurant, check out that little beach, but there's a wonderful 700 foot pier. On the north side of the island is the is the jetty. So it's another great place. You could walk the jetty. Almost every time I go out there, I'll see dolphins, I'll see manatees, I'll see fish jumping. There's a little ice cream shop out there on the jetty. They could watch, it's one of the best places in the whole entire county for watching sunsets. The sunsets are spectacular out there looking for the Gulf of Mexico. You could find a mix of, again of, there's some, actually some mobile homes here at Venice Island for super cheap. There's condos starting in the 300s for again, one of those smaller motel style-ish, old motel style condos. And then going up from there, you'll find condos that are beachfront for over a million again. And again, like I talked about single family home pricing as well for Venice Island. It's a wonderful thing to do. I like, what I also like about Venice Island is there's all these different beach accesses up and down the island from everything from the jetty on the north side to Casperson on the south side. Casperson has rocks and it's world renowned for its shark's teeth, just like Venice Public Beach. But honestly, if you keep going south, even Casperson, then the next island south is Minnesota Key. If you keep going south, the shark's teeth and the shelling is absolutely incredible. I mean, I'll go out and I'll spend a couple hours out there and instantly come back with a baggie full of, of shark's teeth, something the kids absolutely love to do, digging and finding shells, different shells, sea creatures, shark's teeth, all that. You, you can find everything from that, the rocks, natural beauty of Casper Sin, the trails, the park, everything that has to offer, and then working your way north to the big public beach of Venice Beach, to the jetty. There's everything you can find from downtown, coffee, restaurants, wonderful dining, and then the historic side of Venice, the architecture of Venice. There's so much going on. There's so much value, so much beach accessibility, all within bike, golf, golf cart, or walk away. But something to definitely consider if you are looking to be a little bit more removed, a little bit quieter, it's still very affordable for what it offers. Something to consider. Again, you're not gonna be in the hustle bustle of having accessibility to downtown Sarasota, everything downtown Sarasota has to offer. If you're looking for amenity rich stuff, then you're gonna probably consider Bird Key or Lido or maybe South Longboat, but, and that's kind of like that magic triangle, if you want to call it that, if you're looking for truly to be in that urban city lifestyle, but if you're looking for more of that island laid back lifestyle at an affordability, walkable to the beach, Venice Island might be that choice for you, offering that small town, downtown feel, still getting the amenities, just not high level amenities that you get in Sarasota. But if then if you obviously, if you want to be completely removed, 
then you're going to probably go down to Minnesota Key, which is the next island on the list. Minnesota Key is 11 mile long island. It has the Gulf of Mexico, of course, out to the west. It's got Lemon Bay on the east. It's about 800 households, 1,500 residents that make up Minnesota Key, primarily single family homes. Minnesota Key actually, again, is in both Sarasota County and Charlotte County. So Charlotte County is kind of like on the north side, you have Manatee and Sarasota. On the south, we have half the island on Sarasota County, the other half in Charlotte County. On the southern end is where you'll probably find a lot more of that commercialized stuff. You'll find some restaurants and you'll find more condos, beachfront condos, as well as some like motel style condos. You have Stump Pass is a wonderful park on the very south side of the island. It, there's a 1.3 mile trail through nature. You can often find tortoises, birds, and a ton of different stuff out there. And again, like I said, the shark's teeth and the shelling is spectacular there in Minnesota Key. But Minnesota Key is known again to be a lot more removed. You're, as you keep going south, you're getting further removed from Sarasota. Now you're about halfway between that Fort Myers and Sarasota mark. So you're kind of in, I don't wanna call it no man's land, but you're in no man's land regarding accessibility to like a theater or like those fine dining spots. Inglewood has its own little downtown area on Dearborn. The county itself is dumping millions of dollars into Dearborn. I think they see something in Inglewood. They see the growth and they see more. And Northport itself is the fastest growing city in the state of Florida, which is absolutely insane. Obviously, that part of that is being is from Welland Park. But Inglewood, Minnesota Key, Welland Park, there's a lot going for it as Welland Park grows going to push a lot more people into Minnesota Key. That's going to be the main beach, especially as the road is developed and pushed through from Willem Park out to Inglewood. So there's a lot, lot of things that are going to be coming in the future for Inglewood. And right now, if you live in on Minnesota Key, you're probably going to go to downtown Welland. You're going to go to downtown Venice as your main hub. So it still feels very removed, very quiet. And there's still some tremendous value there on Minnesota Key. You could find condos on the key itself for in the 300s and you can find single family homes starting well under a million and then working the way up there obviously if you find like a new home that's beachfront or something with all that being said i hope this provides gives you some really good insight to the makeup the feel the culture of these seven islands like i said i was born and raised here i've spent my whole life living and doing things on these islands and to this day i still take my family if i want to go sharks teething and shelling with my kids i'm going to go to Minnesota key or i'm going to go to venice island if I want to go and feel removed, I'm going to go to Longboat Key most likely, and I'm going to find a beach access there in Longboat Key and set up shop and let my kids just run on the beach. If I want to go by myself and go put my headphones in and sit down and read a book or walk and it might feel like more natural, I might go to North Lido, easily accessible on and off the island there from downtown Sarasota. If I want to go take some friends that are in town and actually go grab a drink and go grab some food and then walk down to the beach after. I'll probably go to Siesta and show off Siesta. Every single island has its unique characteristics, has its own feel, its own culture, and its own pros and cons. If you're looking to move here and you're considering being on one of these islands, I would love to sit down with you, explore those differences, those pros and cons, and even take you out and show you some of those differences in person. Thank you for watching my video on Minnesota Key. I hope that it was valuable information. And obviously, if you have any questions at all or want any more information, please don't hesitate to reach out. We would love to be a resource for you. Thank you.